Hello again, SG Beers. Companion Wolf here. I'm super excited about this week's Smile Game Builder tutorial video because it's a really cool technique conceived by Vertex55 on Steam or Smile Game Building here on YouTube. Check in the description for links. Anyway, if this is the first video you've watched in my SGB tutorial series, or if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified of when I upload new videos. When Vertex asked me in the comments to do a tutorial on his mini-map showcase based on his own tutorial on Steam, I jumped to the chance because this showcases some of the things that SGB is capable of with a bit of innovative and lateral thinking. Now as I said, I didn't conceive or create this mini-map, I'm just making a tutorial based on Vertex's own. And dude, I hope you don't mind, but I've taken a few liberties with this and put my own spin on it, but the credit still goes to you. Also, I'm trying out a new format for my videos. Same type of content, just a different format, and also a new video editor. So let me know in the comments what you think of it. You'll need several things prepared in advance for this tutorial. The first is obviously the map, which is 30 by 30. You can use other sizes as well, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll stick with the 30 by 30 it's much easier to work with. You'll also need three images. The first is obviously a snapshot of the minimap. You can do this in one of two ways. One is using the overlay minimap in the editor, which doesn't include any objects. Or you can zoom out on the editor map until you have the entire map in your sights, which will include objects. Then you can crop it in your favorite graphics editor and use that as your minimap. Either method is adequate depending on the style you want. Oh, and with the latter method, make sure you do the print screen before adding any events on it, including the cursor, because it'll all be captured. The next image is the dot for the player position. For this tutorial, it'll be green. And if you're doing a quest marker, create a different colored dot. This one will be blue. I'll cover this later in the tutorial. Import these three images in Add Assets, Game Images and Images, as I have done here. And I've also included the screen snapshot of the map. After that's done, the last thing you'll need is To create three blank events, event A, B, and C. Onto the events, event A is for initializing the minimap and the player marker as well as their initial coordinates on screen. Graphic 0 is for the minimap. I've used the coordinates 721 and 305 to place it at the bottom right of the screen. These coordinates are also the foundation for calculating the player marker in relation to the player, as you'll see in the next part. And graphics 1 is for the player marker itself. I've set the XY coordinates at negative 24 each to place it just off screen for now. Event B is to synchronize the player's XY coordinates using the advanced variables. This is then set to auto start synchronize so that it runs in the background. Event C is where the magic happens. This is where the player marker moves around on the minimap according to the player's position. It's also the most complex part. It took me several hours to figure out the best and most efficient way of doing this. I've included a few reference images to make things easier to follow as I go through the process. There are a few important things we need to set up first before going into the event itself. Just bear we with me on this, it's all relevant.
The first thing we need to do is to find the center point of the map in the map, which is half the map size. In this case, it'll be 15 by 15. And on a larger map, such as a 60 by 61, it'll be 30 by 30. This will be used for the conditions checking the player's position. <coughs> we next divide the map into sections or blocks, and since we're using the four corners of the minimap, each block represents a 48 by 48 square. This will be used to calculate the relevant positions on the minimap. It would probably be easier to do this in the graphic editor of your choice and use that as a reference guide. I use GIMP, of course. I always come back to it. The minimap's XY position is 721.305, set up in event A. And this is also the reference for calculating the relative player position where the player marker will move into one of the four corners when he moves into that area. The coordinates of the minimap center point is 817403. You can always find this by trial and error as I did. However, the simplest way to calculate it would be to use the blocks. Since each one is 48 by 48, we need to double that amount to encompass both sides of the map, both across for x and down for y. This would make it 96 by 96. So these are added to the minimap xy positions. 721 plus 96 equals 817, and 305 plus 96 equals 401. We'll use these shortly in event C. Now this is where it becomes hectic. I'm going back into the editor for this. For those already familiar with RPG Maker, it's the same. At the bottom of the screen, in the status bar, you'll find the map coordinates, with the top left being 0, 0, and the bottom right being 29 by 29, hence a 30 by 30 grid. And as you move the cursor around, these will change accordingly. These are not the actual coordinates, they're just for the map itself. And hence we get the center point at 15 by 15, which, is, which was established in the beginning as half the map size, both X and Y. I'll refer to these as the conditional coordinates. They'll be used in the reference conditions in event C. One thing to note th is that from this center point, as you move the cursor around, you'll notice that the XY coordinates increase or decrease according to its position. This is important when it comes to determining the relevant operators <coughs> for the XY conditions in event C. After all that, we can now finally set up event C. You can, of course, use a single sheet with numerous variable box checks for the conditional coordinates, but I found that to be cumbersome and hard to follow, especially on maps larger than 30 by 30. Instead, I created and renamed the sheets appropriately. Each one's trigger is auto-synced and run repeatedly, which will work because of their conditions being different. For the next part, I made this reference image to show the player marker's positioning for each corner. The X and Y coordinates show the correct operators for the conditional coordinates. As a rule of thumb, if a coordinate is negative, decreases in the editor map, then less than is used. And conversely, if the coordinate is positive, increases in the editor map, then greater than is used. You'll see what I mean shortly. And the other numbers are for the player marker. These, the, these are added to the minimap position to move it to the relevant corner. For some reason, 144 as opposed to 96 seems to work much better. 
For this center point, since nothing is added to or subtracted from it, in the event sheet conditions, the player x and y coordinates are both equals to 15. The reason it's 15 is because, if you remember, in the map editor, the center point showed as 15 by 15 under the cursor. When the player moves it into the center of the map, the player marker will move to the center coordinates. The image is graphics 1 for the player marker, which would be displayed at these coordinates when the player moves into the central position. You can also reduce the image size, as I have done here, with all of these actually, and it doesn't affect the relative positioning too much. You don't have to put this in, it's not part of Vertex's tutorial. I used it for reference only and decided to keep it. Starting with the top left, you'll notice that X and Y are both negative, which means on sheet 2's conditions, both conditions for the player coordinates need to be set lower than 15. Again, graphic 1 is displayed. And to get the coordinates, if we look at the reference image, again 48 is added to both X and Y for the player marker position. With the top right corner, X is positive, so greater than needs to be used for the player X coordinate, and Y is negative, so lower than. Once again, we add these values to the minimap position to obtain the graphics coordinates. The same applies to sheet 4, the bottom left corner. This time x is negative and y is positive, so the conditions are set to lower than 15 and greater than 15 respectively, and those values are added to the graphic coordinates. And finally, on sheet 2, both conditions are greater than because X and Y are positive and 144 to both minimap coordinates for the graphics coordinates. If you become lost or you can't quite follow this, then just use this image as the reference point and add the values in yellow to the minimap position to determine the actual position of the player marker. And now we can play test it to see it in action. And so as the player moves around the map, watch the little green dot in the mini map. We'll move according to the corner that you're in, like so. And then when you go back to the center point, the green dot will move there too. Vertex also mentions that you can split this into f uh, further smaller grid for a more accurate reflection of the player's position. Thus, instead of using 48, uh, instead of using a 48 by 48 grid for each corner, you can divide that into 24 by 24 segments, so you get a 16 by 16 grid. And using the same principles in this tutorial, for each segment you add multiples of 24 to the minimap position coordinates for the player marker position. The other thing to note as well is the actual image size of the minimap is important when configuring its XY coordinates. <coughs> I couldn't play test with my high Q minimap because it was a completely different size and it didn't scale well. So if you think about the screen online, the minimap would probably need to be about this size in this box here, so it would fit snugly on the corner. If anyone wants me to revisit this in a future tutorial with a smaller grid, let me know in the comments below. So to add a quest marker on the minimap to see where the target is, we're going inside the house.
and Granny wants a mushroom. So <clears throat> on sheet one, set the mushroom, the inventory equals zero, and then she'll just ask you for the mushroom. Turn a switch, Granny's mushroom quest on, and on sheet two, the mushroom would be greater than or equal to one. She'll thank you, take the mushroom away, and turn Granny's mushroom quest switch off. Back to the map. And um, set up another event called Quest Marker where you have a single page with a conditional branch to set if the quest to check if the quest switches on. If it is, then display the message for the quest marker as graphics number two. This will be slightly off position from the player marker coordinates in our case. But you might have to experiment with this and see which position would be just about more accurate. If Granny's switch quest is off, then simply delete image number two. And then for the mushroom itself, say it'll only appear if Granny's requested it. So you add the switch in the conditions add a message, add the mushroom, and then turn the quest switch off. And then on event sheet two, the graphic would be blank as well. And so would the event details. But under the conditions, the quest switch would be off. For the play test, therefore, for the quest marker, So now you can see the little blue marker where the quest item is, or at least in the rough position. And you pick the mushroom and it'll disappear because the quest item has already been found. Thank you, dear. Now I can make breakfast. And this brings us to the end of another tutorial. Thanks again to Vertex for this method, which I wouldn't have thought of. It was sure fun working on it. As always, if you found this video useful, click the subscribe button as well as the bell icon next to it to be notified of any new content I upload, RPG Maker stuff, as well as Smile Game Builder stuff, or you can visit the official sites. Or, of course, follow me on Twitter and Facebook for updates and news, as well as content I don't generally post elsewhere. That's it for another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Until the next.